You asked for it. Many of you, in fact, in response to my Paper Mario review. Well, here you go, Spanky. The first and only RPG with a scratch and sniff coupon. The game that dared to have a character named Pooh. The game that made you appreciate just how long three minutes can be. The game that can be summed up in one word. Uh. Yeah, it's Earthbound. So a meteor crash lands on a hill near your house at night, and when you go to investigate, you find the meteor carried a passenger, a bee. Sorry, not a bee. But his name's Buzz Buzz, so what the hell? Anyway, this not a bee, which is 50% less than half a bee, saves your bacon from a killer robot sent from the future, and soon after gets snuffed by your neighbor in a sit of dung beetle sidal rage. I just made that word up, but I'm gonna keep it. Before he passes on, however, he foists upon you a quest to take a rock called the Soundstone to eight locations all around the world where supernatural phenomena converge into a power so strong it... well... It plays a couple notes of what sounds like Beethoven's Sixth. Each of these is being guarded by a henchman of the intergalactic evil threatening our world, though. So there's that, too. It's a lot to lay on a kid who just got out of bed, changed out of his jammies, and grabbed a cracked baseball bat and his dog to find out what the hell that commotion was. Along the way, you'll encounter... A psychic girl, a nerd who fixes things, a martial artist with a scatological name, a gang leader and his robotic doppelganger, fruit-themed inventors, an enormous pencil sticking out of the ground, a cult leader who is blue, labu di labu die, a rhythm and blues review, an infestation of zombies, one hell of a traffic jam, a guru living in a hole filled with monkeys, five moles each tied for third place, an invisible man with connected eyebrows and a gold tooth, a race of creatures so strange even their font is goofy, and that's barely covering the first half of the game! Wow! That was impressive! Thank you! Did you get all that? Probably not. It's a lot of different directions, and most of it is the definition of absurd. And that's the best part. The setting is so plain. Some small towns, a fair to middling city, with traffic, gangs, burger joints, pizza delivery, and stores filled with baseball bats, yo-yos, teddy bears, other kids' stuff. But this quest for the safety of the planet is all the more amazing. Ivan Reitman knows what I'm talking about. It's the domino theory of reality. Start with small strangenesses on a normal background, and soon you're dropping Sumerian deities into New York City. Earthbound is much the same. It's a refreshing twist from the swords and sorcery or super tech norms endemic to the time. And the music. Man, do they go all out. There aren't many games that are just as downright joyous or creepy as some of the ambiance that fills every corner of this world. From a swinging lounge show to a brainwashed village to... Whatever the hell's going on here. It's a wide and varied soundtrack for a wide and varied game. The SNES was truly the king of RPGs. Any system that could boast this gem alongside Chrono Trigger, Mario RPG, Secret of Mana, three of the better Final Fantasies, the list goes on. But of that litany, Earthbound was easily the most unique. Unafraid to do its own thing, in its own time, with plenty of toilet humor and pants wetting. Good luck tracking down a copy, though. As of the time of this writing, the next online auction to close, for a cart with no box or player's guide, mind you, is well over a hundred bucks. And just for the record, a true friend returns an epic game after 12 years with your save file circa 1998 still on it. Thanks, Brian. Utah! <laughs>